Hey folks, Borges Dude here. Today I'm continuing on the Vintage Transformers route by taking a look at another Turbomaster, and it is Turbomaster Rotorstorm. But before I look at Rotorstorm, let's take a look at his box. This is something I rarely do because I just don't see the point in reviewing the box or showing off the box when it comes to figures apart from the thumbnail on the YouTube video. But because this is a vintage figure, I thought I'd take a look at the box because it's very rare that I will get anything vintage box. Albeit, yeah, the box is a bit bash, but given its age, you know, I can forgive that. Now, you may notice looking at the box, there's very little English on the box itself. That's because this version of Rotostorm has been imported from Europe uh, by a now, from Wiki Research defunct toy store called uh, Gamleys. And so it's quite nice, it's quite a unique thing to have as well. But let's have a look at the box itself. So we've got that late uh, Euro G1 Transformers uh, logo. Here's the the box art for Rotostorm himself. A little showcase of the figure in both modes. There's the Undertaker. Now this is what I want to show you off the back. <laughs> this artwork. Look at the size of Thunderclash's heat. It's absolutely massive. And there we have the bio uh, for Rotostorm. I'll just stop there. You can, if you can understand other languages, then crack on. And at the top, shows you how to transform them. But don't worry, I'll show you as well. And at the bottom there, we get a better look at that vintage G1 art style. Here is Rotostorm and all his G1 glory. You can tell he's from the late Euro G1 era just by looking at his garishly pink cockpit as well as those eyes with a fantastic equally pink light piping that follows you around the room. Your articulation is super limited as you can imagine. You have a bend here and the arm goes up for transformation. It gives you a bit of posing. You can do that I suppose if you want. I don't know. The legs are connected by a a post so your posability is super limited to that or that but just take a listen to those lovely lovely ratchets superb as always as my stable trademark of videos these days let's get a closer look at Rotostorm there we are look at all that lovely silver that's flaking away with age. What's a shame, that's a very shame. Now that bit in the middle of the camera probably doesn't pick it up, that's part of the wonderful Ligarish pink plastic. Again, still quite a bit of detail in those wonderful uh, now retro stickers. I don't know if the stickers have been put on correctly or not. Um, I may get a set from uh, Toy Hacks and replace them. He is a little bit dusty as well, but that's expected because he is very, very lovely and vintage. Again, let's zoom in on that head sculpt. Absolutely fantastic. And when it comes to being a Turbo Master, he comes with these very deadly missile launchers. You get two of these and six missiles and the spring-loaded mechanism in it still works so well. It's incredibly dangerous and would not pass safety standards in this day and age. Christ, that man wedge up to anyone. When it comes to transforming Rotostorm, it's a fairly simple affair. You're just lifting the arms up first, then splitting the arms from the main body. Once you've done that, lift up the cockpit, pop it on top of his head, then put the feet down. Then what you're going to do is bend the legs as they are going to fit underneath the helicopter. Once that's been done, what you're going to do is pop the two back parts of the helicopter together. There's two tabs there, one on the arm and one on the fins. And then you're going to fold out the lower fins. And the last part is just adding the rotors and the two missile pods. And that's you done. You've transformed Rotostorm. Here we have Rotostorm in his alt mode, which is classed as a Cybertronian helicopter. Although to me it looks like the copter from Super Thunderblade on, from Sega. The rotors are a thing of beauty and you can see why 
um, they tend to never be with the figure on second hand sales on eBay um, or when you see them at conventions because it's just clear plastic and it will be easily broken. This figure also has a rather nifty attack feature where you've got a little button there that you press and he does this ready for attacking the Decepticons. Here's a closer look at Rotorstorm in his alt mode, give you a better idea of what it looks like. Now considering it's a, a G1 transformer, most of the stuff you see has already been shown in the robot mode but still. You can get the missiles to sit there but to be honest they do sit quite loosely. I'll just put the missiles back in a baggie to keep them safe. Those lovely rotor blades there, so beautiful yet so fragile. Get a better look at the weapon detail as well. Kind of like the little cogs you get with the Energon figures that were released a few years back. And there's the, the double fin hiding the arms. Really good, really love it. Really wish I took that paintbrush that I used for dusting off the display shelf. Final thoughts on G1 Rotorstorm. I'm so happy to have this figure. This is a figure I used to see in my local Woolworths but was never able to get. Now I have them and absolutely love having them. I certainly didn't pay the £9.99 that you've seen on the box unfortunately. I wish I did, that would have been awesome but paid a little bit more than that. But bear in mind he is complete. He comes with his launchers, the fins that are always missing, the six missiles although he now has five because I literally just shot one behind the back of the uh, the TV, which is a bit of a shame, and mind I'll get eventually. And of course, his rotors. You never see his rotors. He's either missing them when you see them on eBay or at toy conventions. You just don't see that, or if you do see them, complete. You're usually paying quite a bit for the figure. Now I paid a, a fair price for the figure. I'm not complaining at the price. I thought it was fairly decent, and he's an excellent quality for his age. Would I recommend this figure? Absolutely. If you're collecting G1 stuff and want to venture into the, the later G1 curios, like the Turbo Masters, Accelerators, Aqua Speeders, things like that, he's a good starting point. He's a stunning display piece for your collection. Again, the light piping just follows you everywhere. You can't go wrong with this figure. If maybe the colour scheme and light piping isn't for you, well, you could try the Universe uh, repaint Whirl, but I think he does have light piping for the eyes but he's probably harder to find these days and probably a bit more expensive when you do come across him. Well folks, that's my look at G1 Rotorstorm. A big thank you to my new subscribers. I really do appreciate it. I'm so close to hitting 200 subscribers. I'd like to do that before the end of the year, so fingers crossed. As always, I do respond to comments that are left on my videos. And as always, guys, be excellent to each other.